Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, May 4th, 2018. I uh, wanted to do a quick market uh, recap, uh, take a look at where we're at right now and uh, what's happened after the last day or so here. Uh, these are We're starting out looking at the, uh, the charts that I put up yesterday morning. These were put up around 1030 on the site um, showing both the SPY and QQQ I'll get to in a second. So I out outlined two scenarios and the, you know, the title was of the post was that uh, the SPY uh, was testing key support. Um, and I showed you these scenarios here, laying out a bullish scenario of uh, a slight undercut of the 20, uh, the 260.83 support level. You can see going back, it's pretty well defined, um, showing a move up here to 246.88, followed by a pullback. Uh, there was reason there, uh, something else I didn't put on that chart, um, but I had noticed here is a trend line going down there that we might run into. And so far, so let's. That was yesterday's scenario. And mentioned that if we didn't, that we. And the key key component there is we had. Uh, and as you guys have followed me for a while, you know I love these 60-minute divergences. You know, swing trade the divergent lows like we had right here, like we had right here. We have had divergent highs. Uh, they're not all marked on here. Uh, that's that's my go-to swing trade uh, trading time frame. So that's where we were yesterday morning. And let's just take a quick look at where we are today and uh, how that's played out so far. Uh, almost to the button, perfectly. You know, we went a little bit lower. Put in that divergent low that I had outlined there, uh, rallied right up to that uh, first uh, level where uh, I was looking for reaction, which again was right, uh, you can see the little arrows, 264.88. And so that's that's where we're at right now, uh, roughly uh, right around that level. Uh, I've added a, more of a resistance zone. And there's that downtrend line that may or may not come into play. Now, uh, like I always say, it, in my book at least, it takes three reactions to validate a trend line. Any two points can be connected at random. So therefore, you know, my, my, uh, my outlook remains the same. We're at resistance. It's both horizontal price resistance as well as potential downtrend line. So if we get a reaction here, like I think we do, we get a pullback, um, that will then validate that trend line. Uh, so if we do pull back, and we're not going to see this happen today, most likely it'll it'll happen next week. If it does, get that next thrust up that I was talking about to that 268 area. And doing so could also keep this divergence intact if it's a minor pullback. So that's that's what I'm looking for now. So that can you know this this these trend lines here can take the form uh, of a wedge. It might have a little more downside to work its way. Uh, you know, we could go lower from there, but either way, I, I just posted in the training room a minute ago, I faded this rally right here. Uh, we have the SPY at resistance. So uh, whether that downtrend line gets validated or not, uh, you can look at the chart here and uh, go back in time and you look at all these reactions. This is what I look for. Somebody asked, you know, uh, someone new to trading and charting the other day asked about trend line drawing. And, and again, it's more of an art than a science, but I look for uh, a lot of reactions. In this case, it's a horizontal resistance level or really a resistance zone because I have two lines in close proximity, the upper part of that zone being about 265.50 right there. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for. And if we blast on through there, then what we have today is uh, what will probably turn out to be a trend day. A trend day is when prices, you know, the, the, they open and they either trend up pretty consistently throughout the day, closing at or near the highs, or on a trend day, you can have a bearish trend day when the reverse happens, you open trade down throughout the day closing. I don't I don't see that happening today, but you know, it, again, trading is all about just taking objective entry. So, you know, by, you know, for a day trade to short here, uh, with a stop not far above if that resistance is taken out. And again, I look at all the indices, not just SPY. Uh, I'll look at uh, the futures, uh, QQQ. I'll even look at the small caps and we'll go over those real quick. So, so far, so good. And again, that's my preferred scenario. See a, a pullback here, a fade in the uh, last couple hours of trading today. But, you know, nothing surprises me in this market anymore. So you just have to respect what happens if we take out the that resistance and let's look at it. let's look at QQQ and again it's not any one index that I would ever I would never make a trade on SPY I usually trade NQs uh, the, e, the, the E-minis on the NASDAQ 100 or sometimes QQQ or some of the derivatives there but even if so I will never make a trade on the Qs unless I can confirm that bearish or bullish case that I'm making on QQQ by a bearish or bullish case on SPY. So in other words, what we have here is we have both SPY, as I just spent quite a bit of time on, 
showing you running into resistance as well as QQQ. I'm circling the reasons. Uh, you can see this is even a little pause there. That's a reaction. There's a reaction high. There's a gap right there. Tops of gaps are, are, are always uh, pretty significant support and resistance. A lot of reactions back here. So again, a pretty pretty valid resistance level 164.14 and uh, you can see what happened yesterday uh, I mentioned at the time we were at support of around 163 163.33 it's a pretty decent support level a lot of reactions going back there but there was also a big gap to be backfilled and gaps are, are often backfilled and uh, let's just jump back and look at what what uh, we we were uh, what I had posted yesterday in the morning, this was uh, QQQ at the time on the same post uh, to yesterday morning about 1030. We were testing that gap support, but as you can see there, even my, my bullish scenario had us going down to the bottom of the gap before reversing and coming up to this 164.14 level. Uh, and in doing so, as this shows you here, if that bullish scenario played out, which it did, it would put in... Uh, well, actually, I, I take that back. I drew it as divergence, but this was really that low point. So you cancel that. That was a that was a, an error on my part. But we did have divergence on the spy, as I just showed you. So forget about these divergent lines because th they they come off this low. To have positive divergence, you have to have uh, prices making lower lows, which we did here. But the indicators also have to be making lower lows. Oh, no, what, oh, I'm sorry. To make that more clear, divergence there, we had, would have had to come down and undercut that low. That's what I guess what I'm trying to say here. So this is what the divergence would have to look like. And keep in mind, that's still potentially in play. Let me clear out those lines and just show you something here. If we do reverse, ah, darn wrong tool. Let me grab a line tool. If we do reverse, uh, and you can see, here's here's another reason I'm fading this, this uh, pop right here. A lot of these indicators are struggling with this, you know, the PPO is struggling with that zero line. So let's just say we do fade. This rally does get faded today and into early next week. Here's one potential scenario. Um, you know, I don't you keep coming down and testing these lows. It's not going to be good. You know, more we test them, it just shows this market is very weak. But with that being said, you know, if we extend these lines out, as long as the we don't take out these previous reaction lows, I'm referring to right here in the indicators, uh, and you have this low here. So what I'm doing is drawing out a potential scenario. Uh, this was yesterday's chart, so I'm, I'll get back to today's chart in just a second. We are right here where I forecasted we'd go. Uh, this, this is what it would look like if we reverse. And so therefore there's still potential, I mean, it might be a quicker move down. So there's still potential to put in a divergent low on the 60 minute chart of QQQ. So again, that was yesterday's chart. Uh, as of today, let's flip back. There we are at that level. Uh, so, you know, again, my expectations for a pullback. And if not, there's still resistance above. I have a potential downtrend line here. Um, it has a few reactions along the way. So, uh, you know, you can look at that as bullish. And that's why I can't rule out the fact that this may be a, you know, trend day and there may, may be more upside. And if we, there is more upside, you can see right here my next uh, resistance levels at 165.88. In other words, the market's been grinding around sideways for months now. Uh, there's a lot of support resistance overhead just as there's a lot of support down below so you know if you're not an active trader if you're a long-term investor I've already gone over charts some key developments to watch for on the long-term charts but uh, my point I'm trying to make until we really take out uh, these lows, the February lows, uh, and you know, an early warning sign would be the early April lows. Uh, this is QQQ. Uh, until we either take out those lows or take out the highs, that's that's the market we're in, and you just have to recognize it, it recognize it for what it is, and which is a market that has been grinding around sideways. Tremendous opportunity for day traders or active swing traders, meaning you can take a position home uh, for two, three days, swing these micro trends, and you're making what you would have made in, in just days, you're making what you would have made in weeks or months over the last few years until we started seeing this volatility uh, kick off in late January. So, um, you know, great market. Uh, again, if you're nimble and if you're not, that's fine. Uh, you know, stand aside or keep things light or just observe and watch and um, you'll kind of get an idea of what 
volatility looks like and how you can trade off these micro levels and, and why, again, my focus has been largely down here on this 60 minute time frame and in intraday charts because that's where the, you know, the opportunities have been. And once we finally make a definitive break to the up or downside here, uh, we'll start focusing again back on the daily and weekly charts and, uh, you know, look at uh, where we might be going longer term, where the next major trend, bullish or bearish, might be. Quick look at the futures charts for you uh, futures traders. This is NQ. I have a lot of levels. You can make it out here on the video. These are all resistance levels. But uh, most importantly, again, I like to, you know, uh, even if whether I'm trading NQ or not, I like to keep it on my radar because it gives you, you know, it trades virtually around the clock during the week. So you have, you're not really surprised um, by any big gaps if you're only trading QQQ and you're not watching the pre-market and after-hour trades. Uh, all of a sudden, you're going to have a big gap before, or, you know, uh, you know, for or against your position, and you know that can be mitigated by trading NQ. Now, futures aren't for everybody, so if you really, if you're not familiar with them, you don't have the capital requirements or knowledge. But uh, you know, one nice thing in this volatile market uh, is a lot of these, some of these big moves happen overnight, and you can have stops that can be, you know. Uh, moved up on a position or trailed, and then you're not subject to those large opening gaps that you are on QQQ because uh, you if you can't place a stop after hours. Um, you can only place stops during regular trading sessions on on the Q. Uh, yeah, on any on any ETF or anything like that. So where are we at right now? Well, there it is. We're just a hair above this uh, resistance level right here. Uh, let's see what happens. You know, what all that really matters is a 60 minute candlestick close. Uh, there's a downtrend line again, that's similar to that one I just showed you on QQQ. So that in itself is bullish, but, um, you know, that that's been taken out, but we're at resistance. And again, my snare from yesterday, which still holds true is come back in. And, and if you're looking for a quick pullback target, um, you know, I'm just looking right now for a day trade on this fade if I'm not stopped out. And that would be maybe a, a nice pullback target would be a back test of that trend line. Of course, I'll try to align that with any support on QQQ as well. So there's NQ, uh, E-minis, 60 minutes. And for you ES traders, uh, same story. The two, let's see, that level is at 2658.74 right there. Pretty solid resistance. I mean, look at that. Look at when I go back, all the way back here. I'm just going to circle this again to show you how you know how I come up with these lines are not random. I'm circling all the reactions off that level from at or very close to that level. I won't even circle that one. Uh, one, two, three most recently. And, you know, I put a higher weighting on the most recent reactions. But, again, I can go back for months here and show you a lot of reactions. So, therefore, uh, this is a big rip. Um, but all, you know, all big rips come to an end and we're coming up on very significant resistance. So there it is. I think the upside is limited, uh, possible that we hold up into the close and park, they park the indexes there, you know, or a hair above. Um, but I'm thinking with, uh, now, uh, what do we have? Two and a half hours to go. Uh, no, three and a half hours to go in trading. So. Yeah, probably uh, I, I think this rally will be faded. I don't think there's enough juice left, enough time in the day uh, to park it here. I think we'll, we'll see a late day fade. But uh, again, you know, if you're going to if you're in agreement with that, it's pretty simple. You know, you can short with a stop not too far above. And, you know, if you're day trading, win or lose, close out by the end of the close. Day trading typically entails, for those of you not familiar, taking a much larger position size than you would swing trade. Uh, you can go in for smaller, you know, percent. You can make a quarter point, half point on NQ or ES, just one or two contracts and still make, you know, $500, $1,000 easy, uh, depending on how much, you know, uh, you, you, how many contracts you have, um, and that's that's day trading. But then you reduce that position size, and whether you're trading QQQ or SPY, uh, reduce it back down to an overnight position or close it out at the end of the day. By overnight position, I mean something that you're comfortable if the market opens up or down 3%. Uh, with a gap on Monday that you're not going to be, you know, well beyond your, you know, your typical stop allowance. All right. Uh, enough on that. That's it. That's that. Let's just see what happens. But again, you can see the big divergence on the 60-minute uh, chart, and that led to this rally. This is this is what I look for in swing trading. I look for, and they're all marked here, by the way, divergent high right there. Boom. There's your correction. Divergent low. 
boom, there's your rally. Uh, another divergent low right there. Boom, nice rally. And then in a divergent high. I mean, this is, I don't want to oversimplify it. it. You know, it can be tricky at times, especially in a volatile market. You know, your stops might be run. But for the most part, you can see how, how well these have played out. We had divergence right here. This was divergence number one and pop number one. Then another larger divergent high right here. And that's that so far. Looks like, a, you know, an ABC. Who knows? Maybe this will be a five wave up. Uh, I don't know. I'm not an Elliott wave expert, but I can tell you this was a divergent low again that was pointed out yesterday. And so far it's played out for what? you know what usually happens those divergences were confirmed they were not burned through and so we've had a nice rally off the lows so far but we've run into resistance so um, bullish or bearish whether that's just an abc you know correction we go back down a lot more or maybe there's going to be a five wave up here a little pull back and a move back up here you can see 2681 that would be my uppermost target right now on es uh, before any meaningful pullback uh, if if we do happen to just have a, a minor pullback here soon and then another thrust up, which would probably occur early next week. Okay, I told you I'd keep this one short, and I have. It's uh, you know just over 15 minutes. And again, if when you listen to these videos, uh, I'd like to use the hit the settings button. You can play them on one and a, one and a quarter, one and a half. You can actually, if you you know if you can take it in quick, you can increase the speed to two times. Really cut down the length of the videos. Um, and uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. That helps. Thanks a lot and have a great weekend, guys.